Welcome to our eighth NWB User Days workshop. Uh, my name is Oliver Rubel. I am a staff scientist in Data Analytics and Visualization Group at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. I am the lead PI together with Lydia Ng from the Allen Institute for Brain Science uh, of the NIH Brain Initiative Grant that currently funds the development of NWB. I have been involved in a leading role with the development of NWB 2.0 since um, late 2016. In this particular talk, I will give you an overview of NWB and the larger NWB neurophysiology data standardization ecosystem. And I'll discuss how NWB helps drive collaboration in neuroscience. Since we're here at the user days, I will focus today mainly on the aspects that are relevant to end users uh, compared to uh, software developers. Be, before I'm going to dive into my talk, let me give you a quick overview of what we're um, going to discuss today. So first, I'm going to discuss some of the challenges uh, that motivate NWB and then give a high-level overview of what NWB is. Afterwards, I'm going to give a quick overview of NWB data analysis and visualization and management tools. And I'm then going to give you an overview of the core NWB um, software technologies which includes the tools that most of you will work with in your coding projects during this workshop. Uh, finally, circling back to the motivation, I'll conclude by discussing some of the energy barriers in data standardization and how we address these challenges. So let's get started. First of all, neurophysiology data are expensive to collect. At the same time, neuroscience data sets are often rich and can be used to answer many different questions even years after acquisition. Reusing data saves money and time and it reduces animal use. Unfortunately, currently, data often have limited reuse outside the purview of the original experiment. Second, sharing neurophysiology data within a lab and with collaborators is tedious. Everyone has a different way of storing the data and metadata um, that is required for interpreting uh, the data. And a lot of the metadata is often missing or stored in ad hoc ways. Finally, scientific results and analysis are hard to reproduce and compare. Processing, analyzing, and visualizing neurophysiology data requires converting the data from one esoteric format to another while important metadata is often inconsistent and or missing completely. So it's the combination of these and many other issues that ultimately makes the lack of standards, data standards for neurophysiology data and related metadata the single greatest impediment to fully extracting return on investment from neurophysiology experiments, which impedes interchange and reuse of data and reproduction of derived conclusions. This is one of the main motivations why we developed NWB. So what then is NWB? NWB is an ecosystem for neuroscience data standardization. But what does that really mean? Well, so first of all, the NWB defines a unified data standard for neurophysiology data uh, focused on the dynamics of groups of neurons measured under a large range of experimental conditions. NWB supports a broad range of data types from end-to-end -end neurophysiology experiments, which includes recordings of neural activity via extracellular and intracellular electrophysiology, as well as optical physiology, uh, behavioral data, as well as the metadata about the data acquisition, such as devices, experimental designs, such as stimuli and trial structures, and experimental subjects. NWB also supports formal extension of the data standard to support addition of new data types, as well as um, data types and modalities, as well as metadata that is specific to labs, acquisition, processing, analysis, and experiments. NWB technologies are really at the heart of the neural data lifecycle. Data standards are a critical conduit that facilitate the flow of data throughout the data lifecycle from acquisition, processing, and analysis to publication, preservation and reuse. And they facilitate the integration of data and software across these different phases of the data lifecycle. What this means is that NWB needs to support the needs 
off and integrate with technologies across the entire data lifecycle. Our goal with NWB here is to work with, not compete with, existing and emerging data technologies. One expression of this um, that you will see during this workshop is that many of the talks and breakout sessions on the agenda are from other tool developers rather than developers of NWB technologies itself. And finally, NWB is a data standard for not off neurophysiology experiments. What I mean with that is that with NWB, we do not aim to standardize neurophysiology experiments, but what we aim to standardize is how we save and share the data from these experiments. But NWB is more than just a file format. It defines an ecosystem of tools, methods, and standards for storing, sharing, and analyzing complex neurophysiology data. In the figure, you can see a simplified view of the NWB software ecosystem. At the foundation, we have the NWB data standard schema, which defines the rules of how to organize experimental data and metadata, which data is required, what it should be called, where to place it, and so on. Extensions to the NWB data standard are then managed via our NeuroData extension catalog. Using the PyNWB and MedNWB reference APIs allows users to easily create, read, write, and use NWB files while ensuring compliance with the NWB data standard. They also include additional tools such as for extending NWB, validating NWB files, and other essential functionality for using NWB files and interacting with the data standard. Uh, higher level tools, which are shown in red, then facilitate conversion of data, introspection, and exploration of NWB files, as well as creation and documentation of extensions, among others. And then finally, there is a growing collection of community software for data analysis, visualization, and management that use NWB technologies and provide additional rich functionality to end users. So before we dive into the core NWB data standard ecosystem, let's have a look at some of the NWB data analysis and visualization management tools that are available from the broader community right now, many of which you will have a chance to get to know in more detail during this workshop. To give you a quick overview, um, I'll divide the tools along two main axes, uh, the environment, that they work in, Python, MATLAB, or the web, and the prime ap primary application of the tools, electrophysiology, behavior, optical physiology, and intracellular ethos. I'm going to start uh, with cross-application tools that work across ECE phys, ICE phys, OFIS, um, and then go to more application-specific tools that focus on a particular area. The first set of tools that you will most likely encounter are the PyNWB and MatNWB reference API, which you will use to convert your data to NWB. Uh, next up is the Distributed Archive for Neurophysiology Data Integration, Dandy, which is a cloud platform for neurophysiology data storage and sharing. It provides software and APIs for data submission, ingestion, and access uh, to the archive. Dandy will support NWB aware search and interactive visualization tools, and it's the official neurophysiology archive of the US um, Brain Initiative. Next are NWB widgets and the NWB Explorer tool, which are general purpose visualization tools for exploring and visualizing uh, NWB files. Data Joint then is a free open source framework for programming scientific databases, and computational uh, data pipelines. Data joint is useful, for example, to manage analysis pipelines and also um, can be used to manage NWB files. Uh, Cayman and calcium image analysis, like the name says, are two um, tools for calcium image analysis. Uh, Cayman is in Python and calcium image analysis is implemented in MATLAB. 
Brainstorm them is a MATLAB based collaborative open source application that is dedicated to the analysis of uh, brain recordings from MEG, EEG, um, ECOG, depth electrodes, and so on. Uh, it focuses primarily on electrophysiology data and behavior and supports many analysis and visualization tools across the entire pipeline. Uh, Spike Interface then is a really interesting uh, tool for electrophysiology. It defines a standardized Python API that unifies data formats and uh, spike sorting algorithms. Uh, with Spike Interface, uh, provides you access to a broad range of spike sorters while allowing your data to remain in NWB, both for input um, as well as output. And then finally, ECOGVIS is a tool for quality control, annotation, and processing of electrophysiology data. So this just gives you a rough overview of just some of the analysis tools that are available uh, for NWB. Um, we expect more tools um, to come online that support NWB in the near future. For example, we're actively working with uh, OpenEFIS NEO already has pull requests uh, to add support for NWB. JR Clost and Scan Image will likely uh, support NWB soon and I believe already support uh, at least in part NWB. And there's a bunch of other tools uh, such as Mies, Rave, and Dobby and others uh, that are working uh, on NWB support. So if you would like to learn more uh, about these tools, um, Please attend our overview of NWB enabled tools today and then um, the elective in-depth sessions for the individual tools um, tomorrow and the day after. So now that you have a high level overview of some of the things NWB can do for you, uh, let's have a peek under the hood and uh, take a look at some of the core technologies in the NWB data standard ecosystem that make NWB work. One key challenge in the development of experimental data standards like NWB is the diversity of stakeholders and data challenges and requirements at the different phases of the data life cycle, from acquisition, analysis, and publication. And a key aspect that has allowed us to manage these diverse requirements um, and discussions with all the stakeholders is that we already early on clearly outlined the main components that uh, we need to make the data standard work. So this is outlined here in, in, this, in this triangle plot. Uh, at the foundation, we have the specification language where we look at how can we actually formally specify data standards. Um, that is then used by the data standard schema where we look at how can we organize complex collections of neuroscience data. And then the data storage looks at how can we take the primitives and the objects defined in the specification language and schema and store uh, these large collections of neuroscience data on disk. And then finally, the data APIs look at how can we effectively interact with the neuroscience data to read, write, query, and analyze the data. In the next few slides, we're briefly going to go over each of these components. So first up is the specification language. Now what the specification language does is defines the data objects, groups, data sets, links, attributes, and their associated features such as name, data type, dimension, description, that we use to model the data. A core concept in our schema language is uh, the idea of neurodata types. Um, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, think of a neurodata type as a class. It defines a data, reusable data type that uh, we can reuse through both inheritance as well as composition of types. And NWB supports the extension of the data standard um, through the use of the same schema language and formal rules. The data standard schema then uses the specification language to find a large collection of reusable neurodata types for storing a large set of different neurophysiology um, data types and to define their organization as part of the NWB file hierarchy. One core concept uh, that you will very quickly come across in NWB is the idea of a time series. So time series defines the base type for any kind of time series recording that we do. 
and then it breaks out into further subtypes uh, specific for different data mortalities, such as electrical series for extracellular recordings, patch clamp series for intracellular recording, image series uh, for optical physiology recordings, and so on. And so NWB provides structured neurodata types for most neurophysiology data, uh, from electrophysiology, intracellular EFIS, OFIS, behavior, stimuli, and experimental metadata. And there is a large collection of different types that apply to these different areas. And so if you would like to know more about specific areas or all of these, then please attend our uh, intros to NWB for electrophysiology, optical physiology, and intracellular EFIS. Uh, which we're going to hold today. As I mentioned, NAB also supports extensions. Uh, they use the specification language uh, to define new data types and metadata. Um, here I just want to show a quick example. Um, Ryan is going to talk more in, in his talk in detail of, of how to build these extensions and how to use them. Here, just a quick view. What we're going to do here is we're going to define a quick extension that defines the cortical surface of the brain. Um, to define the surface, we have an array of vertices and we have a data set of faces. Vertices store the XYZ location, and then the data set of faces references the vertices data set to define the triangles. And so PineWB provides us with a dedicated API for creating specifications using the schema language. So similar to how we would create an HDF5 file with H5Pi, we can create now groups and data sets and attributes, only instead of creating actual data, we're defining how this data needs to look. So in this case, we're defining a new group that has a neurodata type surface that uses the NWB data interface type um, and is used to store the cortical surface of the brain. We then add our faces and vertices data sets to it to find the attributes. And then finally, we create our namespace uh, where this extension uh, is going to live. And then we're going to call export to export the data. What export is going to do, it's going to create a YAML file with the schema for this particular extension. Now, once we have those YAML files, we can immediately use them to read and write the data. So in um, PineWB, you're going to load that namespace. And then through the getClass method from PineWB, we can dynamically generate uh, classes to represent that data in memory. We can then populate that class, add it as a regular acquisition to the NWB file, and write the data as usual. So without having to do any um, extra implementation work, we were able to immediately explore and use um, the extension in PineWB. Similarly on read, we're going to load the namespace and then we can read the file back in and explore the data. Um, MadNWB uh, similarly supports this. Um, here, MadNWB is going to actually generate physical code for you from that extension through the generate extension call. And then you can use those MATLAB classes uh, directly to uh, read and write the data. If you're interested in extensions, please visit our how to build and share extensions and how to write custom API classes in PyNWB uh, tutorials uh, on May 14th from 9 to 10. The data storage then uh, defines how objects from the specification language, groups, data sets, attributes, are mapped to actual storage. NWB currently uses HDF5 as its main file format backend. Um, we choose HDF5 because it supports large-scale storage of complex data collections in a single file. It is optimized for performance for parallel I.O. Uh, and supports advanced I.O. filters. It's supported across platforms and programming languages such as MATLAB, Python, C++, and R, and it targets long-term support. Um, we're also working in, in the context uh, of PyNWB and uh, the hierarchical data modeling framework on um, exploring alternative backends such as ZAR um, for NWB, but currently HDF5 is the main storage backend uh, we have available. 
NWB uh, supports through HDF5 also a large range of advanced I.O. features such as lazy data load uh, which helps us to open even very large files uh, efficiently without overwhelming memory. Uh, chunking which is used to optimize data layouts for storage and I.O. I.O. filters such as compression to reduce data sizes. Um, we support self-contained storage so all the data can go into a single file as well as modular storage where you can split your data up across multiple HDF5 files that are then linked together as well as iterative data write uh, which is used to support data streaming um, and reduce memory uh, usage for example due to during data conversion. To learn more about advanced uh, our features, uh, visit our advanced write in PineWB and MetNWB uh, tutorials um, on May 14th. And then finally, we have our data APIs, uh, which, as I mentioned before, are PineWB for Python and MetNWB for, for MATLAB. They all support efficient read and write uh, and query of NWB files. Um, the APIs are interoperable. Files you write with MatNWB can read in Python and vice versa, and all of them support now the advanced I.O. features. Um, to learn about these tools, I recommend you visit our tutorials um, for electrophysiology, intracellular EFIS, optical physiology. You're going to see these pop up in basically all our tutorials. And so, at the end of my talk now, let me talk a little bit about the energy barriers in data standardization. And so this goes back um, to our original motivation, right? We come from a world where <clears throat> the data is not standardized, and we want to move to a world where our data is standardized. And that naturally requires um, a not insignificant effort, both because we need to learn a new data standard, um, but also because it requires us to look at our data in new ways, to consider uh, aspects of our data that uh, we may not have thought of uh, originally, such as collecting certain pieces of metadata um, that may be required uh, for reuse of the data that you may not have needed uh, because you implicitly knew about. So the question then is, how can we make it easier to move from this world of no standardized data to standardized data in NWB? And there's a, a couple of aspects that help us get, <clears throat> get over this hump. One is the sticks approach, right? where funding depends on our ability to, to ingest our data into standardized formats. Um, the other part is carrots, which is things like analysis and visualization tools that help us really gain benefit from our data <clears throat> once, it, once it is in the, um, in the data standard. And the last key piece is guidance. The things that we're doing right now here <clears throat> is to provide outreach and support to really lower the barrier to, of entry into the data standard world. And so there's uh, a large number of things uh, that we're doing. Uh, we've been hosting the NMB um, user days and developer days for the last few years now. Uh, we had very good attendance throughout the years and um, amazing sign up this year uh, of, of more than 200 uh, people that have signed up for this uh, workshop. We do a lot of community outreach. Uh, we're continuously expanding our documentation and resources. We're communicating a lot with developers through GitHub issues, um, as well as um, through extension proposals, um, where we create new pieces uh, to the NWB data standards. There's also things like the Kavli uh, seed grants uh, and, and, and Simon's uh, seed grants um, that are going out to, to labs to help them adopt um, the NWB data standard. We're doing a lot of outreach with industry. Um, we're working, for example, with Catalyst Neuro, uh, Kitware, Vidrio, MathWorks, Vades, Novella Neurotech on various aspects of uh, the ecosystem to really try and help um, push NWB into the broader community. 
Uh, we have a formal governance structure through the executive board and, and our funders, uh, which helps us also stay engaged uh, with the broader community. I, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of different user engagement uh, uh, efforts that we do also through um, object each activities at a conferences, um, community discussions and surveys. And then finally, everything we do is open source. Uh, you can find everything we do on nwb.org. Um, you can go to our Slack channel and ask questions. Uh, you can post GitHub issues on the various different repos. Uh, when you find bugs or have feature requests or ha have questions to developers. Uh, we also have a Twitter account and all our documentation is open source. Um, the next part that helps people going is funding, um, both in providing dedicated funding for um, Supporting data standards as part of grants, for example, many NIH grants now have data science cores uh, associated with them, um, which in turn are responsible for uh, helping with the adoption of data, data standards across uh, projects. But it also includes mandates such as, you know, the NIH Brain Initiative, for example, um, now requires that all um, grants use standards and archives supported by the NIH brain initiatives to share the data and make it public. Um, but sticks are helpful, but not really the nice way. Right? The nicer way is carrots, where you gain additional benefit uh, from standardizing your data. Um, and that becomes visible through things like analysis and visualization and data management tools um, because they provide you access to new functionality that you would have otherwise not have access to. Um, it comes through reduction of cost and effort, both in the short and the long term. It enables you to reuse your data and analyze it uh, in, in different ways and share it across your lab, which really fosters collaboration. And it can really enable new scientific discoveries by allowing you to uh, combine data in different ways that you didn't uh, weren't able to do before. Um, and it's really when we see those things happening that people get excited about um, adopting data standards. And so, in conclusion, how does NWB solve some of the problems in data sharing? Um, sharing of neurophysiology data is tedious. Well, data in NWB can be understood by anyone familiar with NWB. So, it helps you share the data much more effectively. We said data have limited reuse outside of the purview of the original experiment. Well, data in NWB is designed to have sufficient metadata to be reused. And so we have seen this already where um, folks started playing around with other people's data and try to integrate it uh, with their data. And it's really exciting to see those things happening. Um, and then finally, performing analysis and visualization requires converting data from one format to the other. And here again, data can, here NWB can help the data to be to stay within one format and um, benefit from a growing number of tools in our broader ecosystem. And then uh, finally, I wanted to mention NWB is really an exercise in multidisciplinary team science. Uh, we're working uh, with many people from a large number of different institutions uh, there are way more people that, that I can list here, um, but I want to say thank you to everybody that has contributed to NWB, uh, all our users, all the developers, um, and all the PIs that are supporting us. So with that, I hope you will have a great NWB user week. Uh, where you will work on your projects and learn a lot more uh, about the NWB data standard. And visit us at nwb.org.